I don't know if that's encouraging or discouraging to everybody, but it should be encouraging for us to do the right thing. But what I was going to say is, I, I love sweets, but papayas, mangoes, grapes. God has put that in the fruit kingdom, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And th this is for the holiday. you got to have some good yes, stuff for the holiday. Right. <laughs> yeah, and this morning uh, when I was looking up some stuff online about millet and, and carob and whatever. Um, it was interesting that when I typed in, um, does carob have fiber? Fiber, yes. Um, does millet have fiber? Oh, yes. Do, you know, does pasta have fiber? No. Uh, only whole grain pasta. But there's, you know, that's a good way to tell. Should we eat it? Should we not eat it? Does it have fiber? Does it not have fiber? And if it doesn't have fiber, we really need to go easy or not at all. Would be you know, better. they're making these pizzas out of cauliflower crust now. Yeah. Have you seen that? So that yeah. would have fiber, right? That would, yeah. yeah. But if you read beyond that, there's not much else in it but the cauliflower that's, that's really worth having. Okay, let's move on to our um, happy holidays pudding. And apparently the girl who typed up our... Um, recipes for us. I had put happy holidays, trying to make a play on words. Oh yeah, they're passing out these now. Uh, and she thought I just misspelled it, so she put happy holidays, but it was supposed to be happy holidays, because there's dates in this food. So yeah, I was trying to be cute, and it didn't work, apparently. So. Okay, so... Um, the pudding that you're going to get after the demo of this recipe did not turn out like it usually turns out, so y'all will have to bear with me. I'm still finding my way around the Tri-Cities and who has what I need and who doesn't, but apparently the kind of millet that I got my hands on here is not the same millet that I typically have gotten from home. And so the, um, that's the only variable in the recipe at all was the millet. I didn't realize till this morning when I looked on the internet, there's many different kinds of millet. And the millet that, um, yeah, that I got from Uncle, or Bob's Red Mill. I started saying Uncle Bob's, that's a nature program. But anyway, from Bob's Red Mill um, is a different millet than what I've been using. And it, it even looks different cooked. It's got a different color. It puffs up more. Uh, you don't have to use as much water when you cook it, so apparently there's a there's a real difference there. So your your pudding that you get today will be a little thinner than usual. Um, so, but it still will taste okay. So I did not wash out the cylinder because that's just caramel in there, and caramel with um, carrot pudding is fine. So I'm going to put in this cup of millet that I have pre-cooked. It says on your recipe. Um, how to cook millet. And you take one cup of washed millet, because sometimes millet is dirty, and you boil it in four cups of water for about an hour. If you read on this one, it says one cup of millet to two cups of water, which is way different than, than what I have ever done in the past, and only to cook it for 20 minutes. So apparently you do different things with different millets. But I will say, when you're using grains, it's important to cook grains thoroughly. You get far more benefit from the grains if you do, and they're harder to digest if you don't cook them thoroughly. So this millet was definitely cooked longer than the 20 minutes that um, the Bob su suggested. And usually I order my millet in bulk, which I've got to do that again apparently. Um, and I keep it in jars like that. I also typically order my, or get my dates. I sometimes go to Chattanooga and visit a health food store there that sells them like this. These are cooking dates. They're much drier and a little harder than the nice medjool dates. Um, I prefer the medjool. They're just easier because they're easier. They're fatter and squishier and they just do better. These are hard and dry. So when I use these in millet pudding or for any other reason, I put them in the microwave with a little bit of water, soften them up for 30 seconds or a minute, depending on how many are in there, and these work fine. But, um, but these are way cheaper than the ones, especially from Costco or Sam's. Uh, Aldi isn't too bad, but Aldi's aren't quite as good as Costco or Sam's either. 
Okay, so I've got the one cup of millet in there. We're going to put some water in there. This says hot water, but this water is no longer hot, but it doesn't really matter. When you, if you've got a, a really good blender, you can get by without um, doing a lot of things that you have to do otherwise. These are dates that I have squished into here. They aren't wanting to come out. There we go. And those are um, medjool dates this time, just for ease. And some peanut butter. That calls for one to two tablespoons of peanut butter. Anytime I've had anything call for one to two tablespoons of peanut butter, it's always on a, the heavy side of two. <laughs> yeah. Makes it taste a little richer and a creamier. Okay, and then we need some vanilla. About a teaspoon of that. There we go. And some carob powder. And Chatfields also comes in a container like this sometimes, depending on where you're shopping at. I usually, I have had this container for three or four years now, and I refill it from the bags that I get. Uh, and sometimes I get millet at a health food store in Chattanooga um, that's cheaper that way too. And there is a co-op that you can go through here to get cheaper food as well. And I can send you that information. I forgot to put it on the, the list of um, places to shop and stuff when I printed that up that you'll get in, in a little bit. Okay, is that it? I have at times used Roma. In my, if you like a hint of a, a coffee sort of flavor in your pudding, a teaspoon or two or three, depending on how strong you like it, but um, that has a nice flavor. This is, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Roma, but it's a, like a coffee substitute. It's made out of roasted grains. Um, it's especially good with molasses and a little bit of almond milk on a cold winter night. Also, you can, if, if your um, pudding isn't thickening up very well, you can add some dried coconut and, you know, maybe a fourth of a cup of dried coconut and that will help to thicken things up a little bit. All right, so you just put it in here and blend till smooth. And sometimes you've got to persuade it a little bit. Most of the time I do more than one recipe or like a recipe and a half just to fill the blender up more so that it turns a little easy so it may give us a little trouble this time. to accept a, um, a different food if it's served cute. So if you put it in a nice dish with a few berries, like that. I just bought this dish the other day at the Goodwill. I don't actually own a set of these, but I'd like to. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very cute. Um, it's this, I meant to put the caramel in and never did manage to get around to it. I, if you don't have a dish, with, I meant to put the caramel in here and set it there with some apple slices around that. I didn't want to cut the apple too soon because it'd go brown and then I forgot to cut the apple at all. So, but this was $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. You know, so you can do some cute things without having to break the bank to pull it off. Oh, yeah, and hold on to your spoon when they come around to get the trash. Um, 
And if you don't want to finish all that pudding, you know, it's a little soupy and different than it should have been, but, you know, they'll come around with the trash and it's plastic lined, so if you didn't finish it, that's fine. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. good. You like it? Good. Oh, yeah. Glad to hear that. <laughs> Yeah, some people, a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with carob. If you go into it thinking chocolate, you're probably not going to like it. But if you go into it thinking something different, you know, we need to broaden our horizons a little bit so we can maintain some health. Okay, yeah. This is pretty. Take this away. This is well. Or it, you know, when come back to that. You know, there's no chocolate in Little Baby. Really? Mm -hmm. Same what? <laughs> no chocolate in Little Baby? I know. Are you making that up? No. Yeah. <laughs> so they have a fake, even their chocolate is fake? <laughs> fake chocolate. <laughs> He's an authority now, Marshall. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They created something called compound coating. Is that right? And they use that in place of chocolate. Wow. That's scary. That sounds like something you could put in your yeah. car engine. <laughs> compound coating. Yeah. That doesn't, doesn't even have any appeal there. Oh, my word. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them that you're telling their secrets. <laughs> All right, the next recipe is a favorite of mine. We don't have it very often either. Uh, let me start by saying that popcorn is full of fiber. I don't know if you know that, but full of fiber. Mm -hmm. I bought an air popper a while back at a yard sale for $2. So I have put my air popper to good use. And we're going to make some Cracker Jack, crowd pleaser Cracker Jacks. And this is also very easy to make. Um, I've, you air pop popcorn, 18 cups, just like it says there. And then I'm not actually going to cook this because I'm not sure it's necessary because my peanut butter is, is thin and creamy. And I appear to be missing um, maple syrup, Mark, if you want to grab some off the table there. Okay, so we need maple syrup. Yeah, this, this is fairly sweet, but you're not hopefully going to eat the whole 18 cups all by yourself in one sitting. So, that's, so even though there is some sweetener in there, it's spread out pretty good. People always do that about nuts, too. Oh my goodness, it's got nuts. Nuts are so fatty. Well, but the nuts have fiber attached to their fat, unlike just oils and free fats. Okay. So we've got some maple syrup back here again. So we're going to use a quarter cup of maple syrup. Let's see. That's a third. Let's see. Let's go a little less. Okay. Cracker jacks. Oh, yeah. So there's a third of a cup of maple syrup. A fourth, not a third. Yeah, I did. I went scan here. Okay, and then a fourth cup of peanut butter. And when I first saw this recipe, I thought there is no way that that little amount of liquid is going to cover 18 cups of popcorn. But it did. I was astounded. So I apply the liquid <laughs> it is so easy. You just pour it on there. Okay. It could not be easier. Okay, so there's the honey. So I've got those three ingredients in there. And if I were at home, I would heat it because the recipe says to. But after I did this last night and my peanut butter was so creamy and kind of liquid, I realized I really didn't. I'm not sure I would have had to heat it. Maybe it helps make the, the honey and the maple syrup thinner, perhaps, but... So you use maple syrup 
more instead of sugar. Pretty. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It. It's it's like David was saying. It's not that it's so much better for you, but it is more natural. I know where that came from. It yeah, hasn't it has. been bleached it has or some minerals. And yeah, yeah. It's it's not. It's really not quite the same as sugar. No. But still, it's like the Bible says: eat too much, and you're liable to vomit. You know. So so go easy. Okay. So we're supposed to put about a cup and a half of peanut of yeah peanuts in here. You can use more or less, or you can use any nut. doesn't have to be peanuts. Are those salted peanuts? These are not salted. No. These are just dry roasted peanuts, okay. and those come from Aldi. <clears throat> yeah. And even though it says to add salt um, to this recipe, I don't. I think there's a little salt in this organic mm -hmm. peanut butter, if I remember right. Yeah, it's got sea salt in it. So we don't add that salt. Take it off. Yeah, you, you can mark through that. I, I just can't believe that you would need it. Okay, so I'm just going to... That looks like the, how on earth you're going to spread that. And it tends to seep, especially when it's hot after you've cooked it. It tends to seep down through the popcorn very quickly, and almost all of it goes to the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's amazing how it works its way down through there so fast. But yeah, you just start stirring, and you stir and stir until it's coated. Whoops. My air popper last night was popping so furiously that pop popcorn went all over the kitchen. <laughs> it was blowing so hard, it was blowing popcorn out of the bowl. So I had a mess by the time I got it all done. And this keeps really nice in a sealed container for days and days. Can you make popcorn balls out of it? I haven't tried that, but you might could. Um, although I'm, I'm not sure. Because when, when you get this mixed up, um, and it goes in the oven for a half hour, and it comes out, it's just as soft as it can be, and it's like, oh, no, that didn't work. But after it cools, it's back to crunchy again. So you can see, even with having that not heated, it's still mixing in pretty good. With it heated, it would have been even faster. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's not all the way. And then I would pour about half of this into a big pan, the other half into another big pan, and then bake them both at once for 30 minutes. Pay attention to the temperature, um, which is 250. So you don't bake this on 350. 250 for 30 minutes. And... Um, so, yeah, so there, I'm not going to pour that in there. Y'all know what, what that would look like. But it will pretty much fill two of these pans. And then you let it cool for a little bit in the pan before you um, store it. You don't want to store it in it hot. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about anything we just covered? We've got one more thing. And then we'll let you go home. It says two more things. Yeah, well, it's it's actually all all for one dish though. <laughs> this popcorn um, came from the we call it the Amish store. I don't think they're really Amish. I've never actually seen an Amish person in the store, but Troyers on Highway 11 between mm -hmm. here and Greenville. Um, they have this popcorn, and they have all different kinds of popcorn. Kind of a funny story, we found some of this popcorn at an Amish place when we were traveling one time up north, and came home and tried it and thought, oh, that popcorn is so good. And they have some that's real tiny little kernels called Ladyfinger. And oh, it's delicious. It's, it's, the, it's tiny little popcorns, and they're so cute and so wonderful. 
And um, so we, this is when we were living in Chattanooga in the area of Collegedale, and they have a natural foods market there, but they didn't, we didn't know that they had it. But we called the company and said, we found this popcorn when we were on vacation, and we're just wondering if you sell it anywhere in the Chattanooga area. And they were like, well, let me look. And so they come back on the phone and said, we do just one place. It's a little uh, natural food store in Collegedale, <laughs> which was like five minutes from our house. It's like, well, that was kind of lucky. But yeah, you may want to try the, the good popcorn from the Troyers over there. Very good stuff. This is delicious. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is really good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Hey, thank you. This, this popcorn doesn't seem to have as hard a husk as some. Right, yes. Yeah, I've, I've bought popcorn before and had to throw it out because it's like, we can't eat this stuff. It's hard as a rock and all kinds of old maids mixed in there with it, you know. And this is, yeah, I've, I've been very impressed. All right, our final recipe today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that and definitely needed that. Got somebody proactive there. All right. I have already put the fruit together. This is for the autumn ambrosia. Of course, I made that name up too. It's just fruit salad. But sounds good though, doesn't it? Autumn ambrosia. If you tell your family they're having autumn ambrosia, I'm sure they'll be impressed. Okay. So ambrosia means the fruit of the gods. Yes. <laughs> So there's, I have halved the recipe, which was actually the original recipe, was half the amount you have on there. But who only eats this much fruit salad over three or four days? I want it to last a little bit. So there's, there's um, some of each of the first three ingredients, and then the apple, which I somehow failed to dice. We'll do that right quick. And you can pretty much count on an apple being about one cup of, um, of apple. For a certain type of apple? Yeah, it, de it depends on how big the apple is, of course. But, um, but I'd say probably, they probably average around a cup. And I like stuff bite size. When I tried to make this recipe to refresh my memory on what it was like, I've got kind of an off-brand of mandarin oranges, and they were huge, <laughs> and they weren't very good, and it's like, okay, I've learned my lesson, stick with dole. You can use fresh, and fresh is really good in there, but lots of times we're in a hurry, aren't we? And we just need to get the job done. There's our apple. And then the secret ingredient in this recipe, the marvelous ingredient that no fruit salad should ever be without is lime zest. I don't know if you've ever put lime zest in a fruit salad. I learned that years ago at a pampered chef party. It is so good. It just, now it's like, if I ate fruit salad without lime zest, it, it just seems pointless, like, <laughs> like all of life is in vain. So we're going to put the zest of one lime in there. Where did you get that tool? Uh, that is a, I think I got that at Pampered Chef, if I remember right, years ago, and I've used it and used it. You can use a grater, a fine grater, but I have not had much luck with that. This is much easier to me and quicker. Oh, this smells so good. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we've got the lime in there. And then we're going to make this cream to go on it. If you're really, really in a hurry when you make a fruit salad, you could use silk yogurt or silk vanilla yogurt. It's higher in sugar, of course, but it, it does the trick if you're in a hurry, and it's still dairy-free. Okay, so that's our basic ingredients for that. What's the oh. special kind of lime you're using? No, it's just a, just a lime. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not a key lime or a, you know, whatever, it's just a lime. I also like a little bit of nuts in my, it's, a, it's walnuts. So we'll do that. 
and then we're going to make our uh, cream to go on it and this pineapple cream is very tasty and you can use it in other ways too like on waffles or pancakes um, and it's very good they have for your information at the stock pot does anybody go to the stock pot in Johnson City they have this tofu for a dollar eighty two it's three dollars at the health food store so that's a significant savings. What's the stock what? pot? It is a, a um, restaurant supply company. But it, it's just right in town in Johnson City. Is that regular tofu? Yeah, that's where I, I get this Mori New tofu. Yeah, this is a very creamy tofu for those of you who are not familiar with it. It's just slick as it can be. And, and it makes a, a really nice base for a lot of, a lot of dishes. All this has a pound package of tofu for a dollar fifty seven. Right, yeah, is, which is very that's good, good that's but it's not normal. this one. Okay. Yeah. So if you use a regular tofu, it wouldn't. You you can, it's but it's brand. the texture's well, not she's as got nice. It but it works. More I, I used to do it all the time before I learned about Mori New. Or more and new. then once I learned that, it's like okay, that's that's it, this is superior, but the other still works. Okay, so I don't know how often y'all use a strainer. Um, these cashews from Costco seem to be very clean as far as I can tell, but cashews come from foreign countries where they do funny things with them, leave them outside and rats crawl on them and whatever. So we have to make sure our cashews are clean. So usually I put them in here and run them under very hot water and shake and shake so that they get scrubbed, you know, bounce them around in there and scrub them off good. This is also handy for straining um, pineapple or whatever else you need to strain. And there's another spoon here. And you want to get as much of the liquid out of this as you can so that your cream isn't liquidy. But this is, this particular kind of, uh, this doll, um, seems like there's another, I don't see it on here now. Maybe this is just their regular. <coughs> this is a no sugar added, of course. But they make a golden dull pineapple, and this looks pretty gold. I have used pineapple off brands before that were kind of peaked, you know, where you get it out and it's like, gee, that's white. That ain't even, ain't even <laughs> yellow. Wouldn't have known it was pineapple if it didn't have it on the label. Okay, I'm going to move this over on the tray so I don't make a bigger mess than I already have. Do that to get some extra liquid off of there. Okay. So we're going to put that in there. <coughs> Those of you that don't have a Vitamix, they often go on sale during the holidays, so it may be a good time to check into getting one. Okay, there's those two ingredients. And then we want one tablespoon of sweetener, and almost any sweetener will do is maple would have too much flavor. You don't want it maple flavor. So that looks like about a tablespoon right there. And then I'm going to, this doesn't say on your recipe, but you may want to write it in. It's helpful to have a little bit of coconut flavoring in there. About a half teaspoon worth. There we go. And you definitely want some salt in this because um, tofu is pretty bland without some salt. Also bought this little container to put my Celtic salt in from um, the Amish store. And it has a sprinkler on one side that you can put your spoon on the other side. And you can see how it sticks to the inside of this because it's moist. Yeah, so it... So that's like a fine ground Celtic? This one is not. Yeah, it, well, no, it looks like it is. I know I have a Celtic one. Mine seems more like crystals. It yeah, yours seems yeah. really fine. It's really Well, I didn't realize this one was fine. Okay. You can get crystal in. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think I got fine, but apparently I did and didn't know it until you just pointed that out. But yeah, that is definitely a finer grain. Maybe Mark, that's because Mark's been saying, oh yeah, I can get it out at out of those little things, and I'm like, no, you can. It's too big. It's like, like yes, I can. Okay, maybe it's because it is is finer. Yeah. 
And I know at the health food store in Johnson City, they do have the fine and the crystal. Or they've got mm -hmm. three or four different kinds. Well, you can find it too at Walmart sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I found it there. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm finding more and more stuff at Walmart. Um, yeah. And typically in this, if, especially if I'm serving it to people besides us, because we'll eat anything, we don't care anymore. I would put some cashews, and I think that, does that say optional on there? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, yeah, it is on there. So a quarter to a half cup of cashews. Cashews will help it to not separate, because if you put the cream in a jar in the fridge to use for other purposes, and then you go to get it out, it will have kind of separated a little bit, and so you'll have to stir it. Small price to pay for being healthy, but so stir it, shake it, you know, whatever. But the cashews help it not separate quite as much. I guess just the fat in them. And they have almost no flavor, so they don't really hurt anything by being there or not being there. But we do it without the cashews, and it works fine. We just give it a stir now and then. So... <coughs> two cups, but I'm doing a half recipe here. This could be called two cup potato salad since everything is kind of in twos there, or one cup if you half it. Okay. All right, that's all there is to that. And I tell you, it's almost better if you make it the night before and, it's, and it sits in the fridge and the apples do not turn brown if you do that. I guess there's enough of the pineapple juice or something keeps them from getting yucky. And I tell you, those flavors just go together. The last time I made this and we had some, you know, day after day, it's like every day it just seemed better. Just like Jesus, every day is better than the day before. Okay, so if you guys want to give them their fruit salad... And while we're getting that going, if, does anybody have any questions? Um, and we'll do our last door prizes. Where, where is the Amish store that you go to? It's on 11 between here and Greenville. It's limestone. It's in limestone. Yeah, limestone just past Jonesboro. No, the, uh, I up the yeah, good food, good food something or other here in Kingsport, just up the street. It's just up the road from the church. It doesn't have anything popular. Oh, does it? Doesn't? Oh, doesn't? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yoder's also has all the popular. Yoder's? Is that the one on 107? Huh? Bulls Gap. It's in Bulls Gap. Yes. Yeah. All right. Sure, yeah. You just go straight up for him to drive in. I like the mine taste of it. I like the mine too. He said she was about to the mine. I want to share something really cool with you. We're entering the flu season, aren't we? You can't taste your mom in And do you know that if you take. Uh, a lemon or a lime, and you wash it, make sure you get the organic lemon or lime, and you put it in a blender with water, it has a natural source of hydroxychloroquine. And, and the hydroxychloroquine, yeah, the whole thing, blend it together, drink it down, it's, uh, it was a medication that they recommended for overcoming COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So... In the flu season, if you feel like you're getting sick, you can get a, a lime or a lemon. Wow. Make sure you get the organic kind. Cut it up and just plop the whole thing in the blender. It's in the skin, the high hydroxy, natural source of hydroxychloroquine. With wow. how much water? Yeah, water. Like a, a cup of water. Okay. But it, it kind of has a, yeah. a jolt to it. <laughs> right. but it. It's doable. Sure, yeah. That's good to know. All right. Let's